welcome to Title Match Wrestling Presents. And I'm with Sabu. Sabu, we're here at WrestleMania 32 weekend here in Dallas, Texas. The legendary Sabu, thank you for joining us. Thank you. I never knew what a tryout was. I never heard of a tryout. I thought they they want you or they don't. And one day, uh, J.J. Dillon called me and said, hey, Vince would like to get in, get you, want you to come in and get a look at you. This was in 94, 95, I think it was. And I go, what do you mean get a look at me? He goes, yeah, come on in for a tryout. I go, a tryout? What's a tryout? He goes, to see if uh, we want to use you. And I said, well, does it pay? And he goes, yeah, it pays 300 bucks a shot. I said, well, I'll come in for the money and see if I'll try you guys out. I'll see if I like you guys. So I came in and did the money and uh, they offered me a job and I said uh, I couldn't take it because I was already with ECW. And Vince goes like, I can't believe that you would give up a job. I'm, 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 some, I'm offering you 200 and 250,000 a year, and you're gonna give up a job for a job that might not even be there tomorrow. And I said, yeah. <laughs> and it was, you know, got screwed in the end, but whatever. What was it that made you want to stay with ECW instead of the WWE? The Paul made these big old promises, and I, and I liked. Uh, being able to express my art form my way, WWE would have changed me, and uh, and actually what they had in mind, I don't know if you remember, was called the Sultan. The Sultan was one of the Samoans, and he had his tongue cut out supposedly, and he had a thing over his mouth. And his uncle, his manager was his uncle, the Iron Sheik. So it was kind of like my gimmick. I didn't speak, and uh, my uncle was, iron, was the Sheik, you know, and I wasn't a Sultan, but he had the baggy pants. He kind of made made him look like me, and he didn't talk, you know. That was the they, that was the idea they wanted for me because they go, we, we would modify your gimmick. And I go, well, well, I don't want to change nothing. You know, I'm happy it's the way I am. And, uh, and then Vince goes, well, no, we have, we'd have to, we don't hire talent, we create talent. And that's what I understood that, you know, they, they weren't hiring me for Sabu, they were hiring me for a body, you know. So they kept that and then basically just placed it on Rikishi. Put out somebody else. Yeah, Rikishi, exactly, you remember, yeah. yeah. I don't know why I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They only wanted you in under their terms so yeah. that they could kind of mold you into their right. own. Right, and then someone could say, well, I take credit for him going over or, or blame it on him because he didn't go over, you know what I mean? But since I, I was, I kind of built myself, no one could take credit for me. The only thing they could do is say, uh, he did it wrong because I didn't show him, you know, or something like that, you know. Around the time they were kind of developing the new generation of stars, yeah. how do you think the Sabu how do you think both characters would have fit in? You, you originally and the one that they proposed. I mean, do you think it would have worked out? Uh, yeah, because I would have made it work out. Uh, I was young enough to, to, to change. You know, I wasn't totally set in my way, but I, I didn't want to uh, embarrass my uncle by saying the Iron Sheik was my uncle. That's That was the deal breaker. I probably would have did it if the Iron Sheik wasn't involved. Nothing against him personally, and he even knows that. But there's no way, you know, it would break my uncle's heart to say that this guy was my uncle or, or the, the, you know, to go with that stupid gimmick, you know. Had you met Owen before? Nope. How did that turn out? It was a great match. But, um, I wrestled um, uh, Scotty to Hardy uh, in my first match, and Vince liked it. So he goes, this is my mark match. I want you to wrestle Owen Hart, but be careful, he's got a bad knee, boom, boom, boom. So I went out there and I wrestled him, and Vince said, great, you got a job. After that match, he said I had a job. And that's when he offered me an up, boom, boom, boom. Then, uh, I had another night to wrestle, and then, then, then that night I said, no, I'm, I can't take the job. Do you, not that, not that you'd regret it, but I mean, do you look back and say, you know what, man, this thing with Paul Heyman, I mean. Yeah, I wish I would have took it. <laughs> I wish I would have took it, yeah. Yeah. It just seems so good what Paul was promising. I mean, what, what were oh, the yeah. kind of things that he was promising you guys? Oh, fuck, uh, pay-per-view, million dollars a year, fucking, uh, you know, everything. Uh, action figures, everything we didn't have, magazines, you know, we never had none of that shit. You know, uh, you know, uh, you know, toy figures, all this stuff, pay-per-views, you know, money. We never had money. <laughs> we still didn't have money. We had bad checks. <laughs> Did you know him in WCW? No, 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 I never met him before. He just called me one day and started putting me over one day and, and said he had a company called uh, World Wrestling Network he wanted to use me for, but in the meantime, he was booking, starting to book, going to book this company called uh, Eastern Championship Wrestling. No idea of bringing me in. One day this guy told me, Dennis Corluzzo said, call Todd Gordon, he's a sucker. You can get 500 bucks out of him. He's running ECW. So I said, hey Todd, this is Sabu. And he, bought, and he came in his pants and I said it. And then uh, he goes, how much do you want to come in? I said, 300. I, I didn't have the guts to say 500. He said, yeah, come on in. So I happened to be there the same day Paul was there. Paul didn't book me or anything. We just happened to be the same day. And then he pushed me. And like I always said, it don't take no genius to push the most over guy. You know, it was easy to see as the most over guy. He didn't make me, and it wasn't no genius to say, hey, just push him, he's most over. It doesn't take much of a genius to do that, you know. Although he is a genius, but not in that way, not, not that day. 
make you mad a little bit to see Paul Heyman on TV now with all the money that he's got coming not, in? Not, not mad. I can just see the smug look in his face because how he, he no, not me, he, he could if he could if, if I would have talked, but he had everybody motherfucker Vince on the mic every chance they got for seven years. Fuck Vince this, fuck Vince that, you know, fuck WWE this. The whole fucking time, even himself, and all along, he's always wanted to work for Vince. Now he's right where he wants to be. Other than he doesn't want to be on TV, he wants to be behind the scenes. So Vince is probably making him eat shit by making him be uh, Brock Lesnar's manager because he doesn't want to be. You know, although he's great at it, but he'd rather be behind the scenes, you know, giving ideas and shit like that. But uh, that's what he's always wanted to be. Ever since he, he my uncle told me when he was 16 years old, uh, the Grand Wizard, um, Ernie Roth used to pick him up in his limousine, and if you rode in his limousine, it meant that like you're in. Paulie was like 16 years old with a you know with a with a camera, and he was in, so he got to know everybody ever since he was 16 years old. So he's always wanted to work for Vince his whole life, you know. But he had everybody motherfuck Vince until he got to work there. Then he said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I guess." <laughs> So do you think do you think Vince is actually employing him just to just so he won't hurt him on the outside? Yeah, he's 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 got he gave him a job so he won't work for somebody else, guaranteed. And, he, and you don't think he likes working, or that's not where he wants to be, is managing Brock Lesnar? No, he doesn't. No, no. That's like he probably doesn't mind it that much because it's Brock, but uh, he don't want to manage nobody. He don't want to go in front. He don't want to be in TV. Do you think Paul would be more of an asset to the company if they did have him on the book? Yeah, of course. Yeah, they, for, for three years he wrote Steve Austin's every word he said. You know, for when the, the first three years Steve Austin got over, he wrote every word he said. Every word that came out of Steve Austin's mouth, Steve, or, uh, Paul wrote for him. Paul loves doing that shit. He's a liar. <laughs> he loves like, writing lies shit. <laughs> he actually said to fucking FedEx, he goes, oh my God. He's like, everybody's saying, where's our money? Where's our money? He goes, just a minute. Oh my God. You did, just a minute. Sabu, just a minute. Here, listen to him. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, Sabo. Oh my God, say it again. And I go, there's nobody there. Oh, they must hung up. They said the FedEx plane crashed with the checks in it. <laughs> I said, there's a, what about the cash? He goes, well, the cash was in there too, and it all burned up. <laughs> I said, yeah, but if it was checks, there's still cash in the bank. Oh. <laughs> but anyways, that was one of those funny lies. Those were some because we heard too, like, you know, some people have said, like, oh, uh, you know, they showed up at the airport and the, the ticket would be canceled. It would be canceled, and be, canceled oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know, or something. Yeah. That ever happened to you? Like, yeah, all the time. Or I had to go with Gus Ramirez, because uh, Gus Ramirez, somebody died in his family every week, so I had to go to the airport as Gus Ramirez. <laughs> well, the people knew who I was, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he was always pulling that shit.